Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Donna from axeratech.com and in today's video I'm gonna answer this age-old question that I've been getting quite a lot in my comments on this channel and that is, and even in life in general, you know, is it safe to be a radiographer, a radiology technologist, however you want to refer to the title either of those two are fine erratic is it safe to be working with radiation like this i'm in need of an x-ray x-ray every day you're exposed to radiation right in some form or the other whether it's the sun or low level radiations emitting from an object or whatever the case is not everybody is going to be getting an x-ray ever so often right so Majority of people get their radiation exposure from natural, naturally existing radiation, naturally existing radioactive or radiation having sources. These levels of naturally occurring background radiation are pretty low, measured in millisieverts, is about one and a half to three and a half, according to the nuclear, World Nuclear Association. Other sources or general sources might say between one to two or one to three millisieverts of radiation. Um, within a year's period. So within a year, that's how much the average person would get. That being said, as radiographers, we have to follow different guidelines, different regulatory bodies that set the standard for what is safe and what is not safe, or what is overboard, etc., or what is normal for us. Because remember, we get occupational exposure. So even though we are normal everyday people that are exposed to natural background radiation we will also get exposed on the job at some point or the other the international commission on radiological protection of the icrp is our regulatory um commission board or whatever that sets the standards first regarding our occupational radiation exposure and in this case the effective dose is supposed to be 20 millisieverts per year or 50 millisieverts in any given year period it's not supposed to cross this otherwise you would have to be alerted go on medical leave all of that well radiation leave and stuff what is the effective dose now there are different types of doses but this is just a general you could do some more research if you wish but the effective dose has to do with our general dose for our full body not just looking at organ dose or all certain organs in certain places no just your body in general this 20 millisieverts per year is supposed to add up between that five year period right so 20 millisieverts per year in a five year period and that five year period has to be consecutive it's not one year here and next couple of years you go back again and you check again no 20 millisieverts per year for five consecutive years or 50 millisieverts for one particular year. As radiographers, it's important that we are aware of our doses and we wear a particular badge that monitors the level of radiation that we get or that we are exposed to. The company will alert a red flag, if you will, and give all the reading of how much exposure you had at the job and stuff like that and, you know, follow up if necessary. Now, apart from this part of, you know, monitoring using that device, we also have rules that we follow and it's our gold standard and it's called the ALARA principle. In radiography, the ALARA principle, ALARA, stands for as low as reasonably achievable, which means we keep our radiation dose to the patient as well as whatever we might get while doing that procedure we keep it as low as possible while still maintaining good imaging right so as low as we reasonably or like as low as possibly achievable we do that so just because we can get a chest x-ray using a very high exposure doesn't mean that we should use that high exposure if we could use less and get a good diagnostic result and to follow that principle we have three things that we look at which is time distance and shielding so with time it means that you limit the amount of exposure time so the amount of time that the radiation is running for 
you limit it so you have shorter exposure times and with the distance part of it we move away from the patient so we don't stay next to the patient because for one why and two that wouldn't be wise right we're already working on this job why do we need to stand next to them as they get their radiation dose for their x-ray you know that's just putting yourself at even more risk so with the distance we move back as much as you can and in x-ray we know that we stand at least six feet because we know how far the radiation extra radiation will travel so six feet is the minimum distance you want to get even further from that if you can and based on how extra rooms are designed you will be more than six feet away from the patient in addition to this distance and the reduction in time you'll also have shielding so you'll have lead glass because lead blocks off the radiation from reaching to you so you will have clear glass well what looks to be glass made of lead that will you know block any scatter radiation that might be um in the air although it shouldn't reach to you in the first place because you implement that distance ruling but just in case we have scatter um we have lead glass to protect us as well as we have things like the lead aprons and skirts and thyroid shields, gonad shields, stuff like that. So to answer your question, once you follow these protocols and these important things that you need to do, these important steps and things that you need to take into consideration while on the job, it is safe to be a radiographer. Otherwise, the profession wouldn't exist. Um, the profession wouldn't improve if, you know, it wasn't safe or it didn't of course we don't have some level of risk but if it didn't have those protection measures in place then it wouldn't be deemed as safe and i definitely would not have done it right so that answers that question wow this video ended up being long thanks so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye